following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. And I got Lou from Fairfield, Connecticut, man. How you doing, Lou? I'm doing good, Daryl. And I got to tell you, you're not just blowing hot air out there. I think the way you look at the market is terrific. You're a nice guy as far as over the TV. All the research you do, all the homework you do, I truly appreciate it. I appreciate the, your view of the market. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-664. Four eight internationally at seven two seven four four five one zero four four. Now, Daryl Martin. All right, folks, come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Let's check out where the markets are at right now. We got the S and P. It's up just a few points on the day. A little bit choppy going on. We got the Russell up ten and a half. We got the Nasdaq up three point seven five. We got the Dow up nine points right now. Copper currently down about a third of a percent, and gold barely moving, just up uh, 90 cents over uh, previous day settlement. We got silver up just a little bit as well, up about a third of a percent also. Metal's going pretty slow compared to settlement. Natural gas uh, barely moving at all, only down a tenth of a percent. We got oil, however, it is up and moving up a buck 63 right now on uh, the day compared to settlement. So nice big moves right there. We got corn flying down, down two percent on the day a little over two percent right now from previous day's settlement so nice move right there in the corn markets uh, i'm going ahead and looking at soybeans soybeans up just a little bit up only a mere four points overall uh let's go ahead and check out we got the euro dollars down 54 pips aussie dollar is up six pound dollar down three dollar franc is up 39 pips on the day. Dollar cat down 15. Dollar yen's up three. Aussie yen's up a mere seven. Your yen's down about 53. Pound yen is unchanged. That's not something you hear that often. So flat on the day at the moment. We got the euro pound down 31 pips on the day. Um, as a reminder for you, we have a couple bank holidays going on right now. Um, Switzerland, France, Germany, all uh, in uh, bank holiday mode. So they are currently uh, celebrating, let's see, um, Whit Monday over in Switzerland. Same thing in France and in Germany. So banks are closed. That, of course, affects uh, and volatility a little bit. Also, uh, we just had the RBA governor come on, do a little speech, Governor Stevens. Um, however, the uh, text of the speech was accidentally released nine hours earlier than the speaking time listed. So I uh, can't really look at the speech itself. I have to look about nine hours earlier to see the impact on it, except for those who did not know we're not watching uh, the news there. And then tonight we're going to have a little bit of activity, not a whole lot, but we got a little bit going on. We're going to have the NAB uh, confidence report coming out for the Aussie dollar, and it's pulling up my stats on it. Yep, nothing to really look at on that. Just be aware of it. Um, the report's coming out at 9.30. Uh, Basically, it is an um, economic health indicator, and it's showing how businesses react um, quickly to market conditions. And it's more of a sentiment indicator. So not really so much a – the problem with it is not really a forecast versus actual. Okay, it's what is this number, what was the last number, was the revision on the last number, things like that. But uh, not really a forecast number, therefore not really a tradable news indicator. We have a CPI coming out of China. That has been rocking the Aussie a little bit. Even uh, sometimes some of the yen pairs there. So you can look at that. I uh, don't really have any stats for you on the uh, CPI coming out of China, but that is being released at 930. So both the NAB and the CPI, two things to be aware of today. And we can go through, get you set up for the rest of the week right here. And let's check out what we got coming up tomorrow. Sort of a, another light, light news day. We're going to have uh, manufacturing production, however, is going to be coming out of the pound. And I'll go ahead and throw a new calendar up here for you. But we got the uh, manufacturing production coming up out at 4.30. And let me see what we got on that that we might be able to make something out of. Heads or tails here. And uh, like I said, 4.30 release. Be looking to trade the pound dollar on the report itself. And uh, the kind of move that we're getting to 7 a.m. And previous to it to see is there something we can do to trade it. 
Uh, looks like about a 40 pip move or so um, on the last release. A little less than 40 pips. If we go a little bit further, we got uh, 60 pips, and that happened on the the one before that happened in like the first 15 minutes. A very fast move. Um, other reports coming out where industrial production was coming out at the same time as manufacturing production, and we'll have that coming out at the same time this time as well. But um, anyway, so the numbers all overwhelmingly uh, better than expected. At the same time, they were revising all the other numbers down and negative. Um, it's hard to read those fundamental numbers all by themselves. You just got to follow it or figure out how to trade it either way. Report before that, we had an uh, ending amount there, about 19 pips off. Before that, we had about 15 uh, positive after a 20 drop. And then we had 37. We had 26. Um, go in, we had uh, about 20 down to 30 up, and then ended out at uh, just like about four pips positive. Before that, we had about 60 down, 30 down. Let's see, 10 up, uh, 115 down, and about 20 down. Honestly, I'm going to tell you on this one that it's so, like, 50-50. Usually we find ones, like, my best, the trades I like the most are the ones that either are either consistently big movers or consistently small movers, meaning, like, say, 10 or 11 out of 12 times. This one, I mean, we're at a 50-50. I mean, we get some small moves, we get some massive moves, and uh, so I'm going to say be aware. Could be a massive mover on pound dollar. It could be absolutely nothing. It's literally a 50-50 news release. And uh, so we're not going to have a news trade for that. You're just going to have a major be aware um, for that one because, like I said, it can be a big, fast mover. Um, and that's that's all I got right there for you. I would like to have more, but that's really the, the main thing. We'll be looking at that for tomorrow. Um, what else we got to be aware of? There'll be another sentiment number coming out at 8.30 on the Aussie. Again, a sentiment number without a forecast, therefore not one that you can do a news trade on, but just one to be aware of at 8.30 tomorrow. So uh, you got a, a little list there that we went over, but you got, uh, you got the stuff for tonight with uh, Australia and China. Again, both be aware events. you got a be aware event for tomorrow and uh, at 8.30. And then for this morning, you got the 4.30 be aware of the pound. Can be very volatile, can be very flat, really a 50-50. But it's one that, yeah, you just don't want to get, I mean, if it's one of those 100-pip moves, you don't want to be, get surprised being the wrong way on the trade. But oil has been um, awesome, just running like crazy. Okay, so uh, checking out what else we have that we can do. But that's really, that's, that's Monday for you, and that is the Tuesday news plan for you as well. Let's go and let's see if we got anything going on on Wednesday. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to have jobless claims coming out of Britain. Um, along with the climate count change and all that fun stuff. Um, and then we're going to go into a little bit more. We're going to have the, let's see here, we have the official cash rate coming out of New Zealand. Can't really trade that on Nadex, so I don't really dive into it too much because we can't really build a news plan around it. And uh, let's see, Britain's going to have a price and balance index, but it's a small impact report for 7 o'clock. Probably going to leave that one alone. I'm going to check it out. It'll be a little bit different. We don't have a lot going on anywhere else. So we do have the employment change in Aussie tomorrow night. So we'll be looking at that here in just a moment. Let me see if there's anything in this 7 o'clock. That's a really rare report. I actually do have stats on it. Just to see if there's anything I can come up with um, based on this price index report. And to go, hey, is there something we might be able to pull off? Um, so if I'm looking at the 8 o'clock, uh, you know, possibly the 8 o'clock, X. well, let's see here. That's 7, so that would be either 8 or 11 would really be our two choices. So let me do an 8 o'clock review real quick. And if I'm going to do that, I need to look not only that, but previous to the release. So we might be able to pull off a neutral trade on it because it's a pretty flat moving event. And... The 8 o'clock you could actually do at 6 when the market opens up. All right, we got 10 pips, 11 pips. I mean, this thing is just flat as can be. 9 pips, 4 pips. Um, we got like 3 pips, but if you held it any further, like it had a big 40 pip run a little bit later. So that was at like 9 o'clock. So, yeah, we definitely want to be out of that trade within that hour of the release for... All right, so it's a little bit different trade, but um, house price index, okay? If you can get 20 ticks or more on an 8 o'clock expiration, um, 
than that. It looks like a solid iron condor news trade. So entering at 6 p.m. on the pound dollar, iron condor buying the spread below the market, selling the spread above the market for a max profit between the two of 20 pips on the trade. Remember, they don't have to be inverted on their break-even distance, okay, proximity there. You just need a max profit between the two of 20, hopefully right there, right near the center. And uh, it looks like the thing just doesn't move at all. So we get a little bit more movement a little bit later that you could check into. But as far as everything's concerned, that looks like a, a potential trade. I don't know if the premium is going to be there or not. I haven't traded that report, uh, but I do have the stats on that report. So I'd be confident taking the trade should the premium be available, um, as, you know, obviously within, you know, acceptable risk measure measurements because you never know what else could happen. But um, anyway, so that's one to look at right there. The other report we have for Wednesday, so so far that's the only real uh, trade I'm looking at. I guess I could, we could look at jobless claims. Um, let me check that out, too. That'll be Wednesday. So we get the week knocked out pretty fast here. Because um, it's looking, like I said, a very slow, slow news week, especially compared to last week's news week. And let's see what we got. We have... Oh, man, that thing can move. Okay, so we got a one report. I'm just looking to see if they're all big. Yeah, it's pretty consistently a nice mover. Um, I would try to go in for, let's see here, based on everything I'm seeing, i got to make sure I'm looking at the 7 a.m.s. You really need to get probably 40 pips or less maximum risk on a straddle. And you could enter, you know, as early as you can enter, okay? Um, I would not want to enter after 3 o'clock. So sometime between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m., looking at the 7 a.m. expirations for a straddle of $40 or less max risk. If you can find that trade, if that trade is available, then for Wednesday night, really Wednesday morning, okay, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, for the 4.30 release of the pound employment rate, okay, then that would be the time to hop in on that trade again. Some enter between 11 and 3, choosing the 7 a.m. expiration for straddle, meaning buying a spread above the market, selling a spread below the market um, to potentially straddle that trade for, you know, a one-to-one -one or maybe even bigger. I mean, a lot of these will just fly. And so in many cases, it looks like you might be better off just holding on to the thing and letting it go. But uh, that's an interesting trade. I mean, you could put a one-to-one -one on there. See if it pans out. It looks like a majority of the time it does work out pretty well or comes close to break even. Um, and sometimes it's just a monster move. So that's that's a possible trade. That's one that we don't trade a whole lot. Okay? Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the Aussie employment change report. That one we have a little bit uh, more experience trading. We'll do that when we get back right after this break. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN. Dot com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN. Com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Daryl, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. All right, let's go ahead and check out the employment and unemployment rate for the Aussie dollar coming up. Uh, so we're going to have that coming up at 9 30. Eastern Time, okay, coming up this Wednesday, and uh, as a potential news trade for the evening, I know there's a bunch of evening news traders out there, so let's see, what can we put together as a news trading plan to help you take advantage of this? We could uh, do 10 or 11 o'clock expirations, uh, so either one of those would be a potential choice, let's see how much of a difference there is, I always like to get more time if I can, um, if it's not a consistently a negative thing, if it's basically the same result either way. And if I'm doing an iron condor. On the flip side, I want to see how little time I can get if I'm going to do a straddle. Because the sooner I can make the thing expire, if the market doesn't really move that much past a certain time, then that allows me to take advantage of that initial movement without having to pay for that premium for the next hour. So in some cases, you want to get rid of the premium cost. In what cases, you want to take advantage of the premium cost. So... Um, in this case, this is a big moving trade on a consistent basis. It's not obviously just like anything else. Doesn't always move huge, um, but when it does, we get a nice move. Now, when do we usually get that nice move? We're usually going to get that pretty fast. When I say pretty fast, I mean like in the first five, maybe 15 minutes. Um, and let me see here. Just looking at like the first 15, consistently over and over again, I am seeing this come through. Um, 
And as being a, really, we're getting a good chunk of the movement in that first 15. So if I don't have my tray, if I haven't taken my profit, we're going to look at a straddle, okay? We're going to choose the 10 o'clock expiration. Um, being that we're going to get in probably somewhere around 9 o'clock for this trade, okay? So we're 9 o'clock for a 10 o'clock expiration, and I'm going to look to close my trade after the close really of the first 15 minutes. You could try to trail it, but from what I can see, it's not going to be worth it, okay? Uh, so basically, I'm in this trade for 15 minutes, and I'm done. Um, and I do need to set a take profit, because understand, this thing, I've, I'm looking at trades where literally the market flies up 80 pips, and or traces back 50 in the first 15 minutes. So I really, really need to set that take profit in there to let this thing pop. That's the big thing on straddles. You've got to take that profit most of the time, except for the few cases where it just keeps going, because if it pops up and pulls back, you have a you know profitable trade turning into a losing trade. So now we know that. We know that's our plan. Um, really, ideally, first 15 minutes, if I'm not profitable, I could set it for a break-even, or I could try to trail a little bit to try to see if I can get a break-even on the trade. Uh, since we only have an hour on the trade, I'm going to really try to go for $40 or less um, on the straddle. Let's see if I can pull that off. Okay, so I'm looking for ideally a $40 or less um, cost, max risk on the trade. And it doesn't mean I couldn't hold it longer. Now, another caveat I want to add to this is you want to look at the 9 to 10, like we're talking about the 10 o'clock, but also look at the 11 o'clock intradays and look at the 11 o'clock daily spreads because you might be able to get them for the same cost or a couple dollars more. If I get them for the same cost or just a couple dollars more and I can get that extra hour, I'll definitely take it. The only time I want that 10 o'clock one is when there's a clear difference <coughs> pardon me, in premium. So, I mean, if it costs me, like, say, 37 or $36 or whatever for the 9 o'clock, but I can get the, you know, or sorry, for the 10 o'clock, but I can get the 11 o'clock for, like, 4 or 5 bucks more, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take the 11, because that's another hour for the trade to happen. So I'm telling you is, ideally, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 10 o'clock, because I know I don't really need much more time than that. Then I'm going to go, well, can I get more time at little to no, and sometimes it is no additional cost, but at little to no additional cost, can I get that other hour? And uh, the advantage of the dailies over the intradays on the straddles is they're wider. So if there is some just magnificent, massive move, you know, and don't really expect it to move more than about, you know, 80 pips. But if it did move that far, I want to be able to, you know, make the money from it, right? And I can actually make more because it will go faster. The spread will travel faster to delta of one because it's further away from the floor and the ceiling in that process. So... Our basic trade setup, again, is going to be enter at 9 for 10 o'clock expiration for approximately a $40 maximum risk. And looking to take profit or move to break even if we're not there within the close of the first 15 minutes. If we have not hit a one-to-one, -one. I mean, if I'm risking 40, I need to make, you know, at least $40 net. But I'm, before I hit that button, I'm going to check the 11 o'clock intraday in the 11 o'clock daily just in case I can get them for a similar or equal risk and get more time. All right. That's our Aussie dollar straddle report. Straddle trade for Wednesday evening. When you get back, we'll check out Thursday. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
And the Hex Powerful Weekly Newsletter, the Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, scrolling on into Thursday, checking out where the markets are at. What uh, stuff do we need to be aware of? We have industrial production coming out of the euro. That's a be aware of it at 5 a.m. It can have an impact, but it's not usually a consistent big mover. But uh, anyways, the industrial production right there in, um, coming out again at 5 a.m. Thursday morning. Walking on into Thursday, the main focus is going to be the retail sales, core retail sales. Of course, we have jobless claims. Um, you can look at expected, uh, you know, ranges for movement since that report comes out the same time every Thursday, but we've got to add into the mix. Okay, I want to make sure the uh, the report right here on the retail sales uh, doesn't uh, mess us up, okay, on our expectations of movement. So what kind of expectations do we usually get on this report? Well, let's just say looking at, you know, 11 o'clock. Okay, we had a move up about 30, but it finished about three pips off. The next was about six off. We got 20 off. Uh, 15, 18, and uh, had one move as much as 40. Um, and then we got another 40 pip mover. Um, and then looking on down here, we got a move of 25 pips. So looking at those kind of movements, you know, 25 pips, 20 pips, uh, like 130, 40 pip move. Overall, really not a big range. So I would actually, looking at the consistency of the small moves, understanding a couple will lose, but 
trying to get that majority max, uh, you know, because you want to be able to get the trades, right? It's not just having the trade, but it's, it's actually plotting out for the premium that would make the trade potentially profitable for us. Uh, but we'll get at that. So many of them are just dead flat that I would actually be willing to go in and look at a, you know, 20, um, maybe 25, but 20 to 25 pip uh, max or minimum, sorry, minimum profit requirement for an iron condor. Um uh, based on when the retail sales reports come out. I want to double-check that across, and we'll do a double-check right now as well, across jobless claims. But as far as industrial production by it, I'm sorry, as far as retail sales by itself, 25 pips, minimum profit, iron condor, buy the spread below, sell the spread above. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to look over at unemployment claims at the same time because these two reports don't always come out uh, together. So a lot of times, you know, unemployment claims pretty much always comes out on Thursdays. Uh, a few exceptions here and there, but just about always on Thursdays. Um, but industrial production doesn't. So knowing that, let's go and look at the jobless claims. Uh, there'll be some stuff mixed in with it. What kind of move are we usually getting? And, you know, can we um, you know, take advantage of, you know, that 10 o'clock uh, trade there? So getting in at 8, going to 10 o'clock, same thing we were doing over there on the retail sales. So 10 o'clock, about uh, 17 pips, 18 pips, uh, 25 pips. Let's see, scrolled on down. Uh, we had a massive mover. Uh, pretty interesting. It actually went down about 15 pips, and then it just, like, edged on down the entire time. It was like an 80-pip move. But it was not a fast 80-pip move. You had plenty of time to be able to get out of that trade at a one-to-one -one scenario there. Um, looking on uh, over a little bit further, meaning if you got 25 pips, if it moves 50 pips against you, hop out. Okay. Um, and then let's see here. The next one's like four pips. Uh, let's see. We got 12 pips. We have three pips. Uh, 38 pips. Five pips. Yeah. So definitely, even with the unemployment claims happening at the same time, uh, for fortunate, they'll even conflict a little bit. But uh, I'd be looking at about a 25 pip, enter at 8 for 10 a.m. expiration, iron condor trade, okay? Looking at a $25 max uh, or minimum, I keep saying max, minimum profit. It's always minimum profit on the iron condor. It's always maximum risk on the straddles. And that'll wrap up your Thursday main trades to be aware of, or a trade, I guess. Uh, one more, uh, I guess, to be aware of now. So it looks like at 6 o'clock on the open there of Nadex. There's going to be a little speech by the Bank of England Governor Carney, and um, but it's a, it's not like a main big press conference speech. I'm sure there'll be some stuff leaked out of it, but I doubt any big surprises. But just be aware that that speech is happening. Um, we're gonna have a monetary policy statement, not really a <coughs> direct tradable event um, based on stats because it comes out at various times. So I mean, you can imagine trying to pull the all the stats when they come out all at different times can be a bit challenging. But let's look at the range in which the times that they do come out are. So we can know. So now what I'll do is I'll just open up like the last, you know, X number of reports. Let's try to get an idea. Going back, um, what can we expect for when this will be released? Okay. And it's pretty simple. It's like, okay, 1040. 1150, 1050, 11, 1130. So far, we got 1040 and 1150. All right, 1040, 1150. 1040, 1150. There's a 1215. 1040, 1150. All right, so most likely between 1040 and 1115, we did get a 1215 in there. So you could say, you know, somewhere between, just to make it a little bit wider, 1030 to 1230, 1030 p.m. to 1230 a.m., would probably be the time to expect that um, Japan monetary policy statement release to come out uh, Thursday night, and we'll scroll on into Friday, and let's see here. They don't have, they do have a press conference. I wonder if they had a press conference following up with it. Those are usually a little bit more on track. Let's see if uh, we're they're staying on track consistently here with these. Let's see what we got. Let's see, 2.30, 2.30, they like 2.32, by the way, 2.32, 3, 3.20, that's probably a time change. Let's hop on back to we'll do like March, April, May real quick. March, April of like the last year here. Okay, then we got the Junes as well. 
330, 330, 330, 340, 320. Okay. So uh, they don't have the time zone change, but we do. So sometimes that can impact it. So somewhere between 230 and, you know, 345. Uh, should expect that Japan press conference to come out as well. That's going to be Friday morning. Okay. So we got the 1030 to 1230 for the monetary policy statement. <clears throat> then basically 230 to about, you know, 330 or 4 for the Japan press conference. And um, that should wrap that up for us um, pretty much across the board on the Japanese monetary policy statement. Um, now, let's see, what other trades do we have? We got a couple more here on Friday we can look at. But uh, that uh, takes care of the Japanese statement for us. So we got a pretty nice little news plan. It's not a big news plan. Again, that's a be aware. Um, you could try to go in and straddle or strangle that, but you're going to have to go back and do all of the research on all of the last reports to figure out what kind of consistent move. And it's really hard to find a consistent move by a certain time, which you need that, right, when you're doing the, the spreads, uh, when you don't have a consistent release time. All right, so let's dive in here. Let's see, what else do we got? We're going to have... Um, Consumer sentiment, usually not a big mover. I've tried everything I can on that, and I can't seem to find anything that really helps out. But we do have uh, the PPI report coming out right here in the U.S. on Friday. So on the PPI report, what can we do with that? And let me pull it on up. It's going to be a Friday afternoon. Let's check out the and all these right here. Unless I state otherwise, like if it's an Aussie report, I'm talking about Aussie dollar. If it's a yen report, I'm talking about U.S. yen. If it's a British report, I'm talking about pound dollar. Um, if, it's, if it's a U.S. report, I'm usually talking about euro dollar, unless I state otherwise. So looking at the uh, euro dollar on here, um, and uh, 5 o'clock, uh, or not 5 o'clock, 11 a.m. expiration. Let's go down to 10 a.m. expiration. Okay, so 10 a.m. expiration on an 8.30 release on the PPI. Okay, we got like 5 ticks, 10 ticks. Got a bigger move there, about 35, 10, 35, 5, let's see here, 10, um, 10 again, a lot of 10 pip moves. Um, let's see here, 20 pips, and 15 pips, moved up about 25, came back down to about 10. Um, I got like, wow, like 4 pips on that one. And 15 pips. Okay, so very, very small move. So you're going to be looking at the 8 o'clock for the 10 a.m. expiration on the PPI for the euro dollar, getting in at 8 and doing an iron condor uh, and uh, again for the 10 a.m. for what amount. Uh, based on how small most of these are, honestly, $20. $20 uh, minimum profit. So really, really low minimum profit. And there is a big advantage of understanding these news reports as a trader beyond simply being a news trader. One of those is knowing like when the big moves are coming to be aware of them, okay? And so that can help you out quite a bit, uh, obviously, so you don't get like hit by the bus. But the other thing, the other kind of bus that can hit you is it's going really slow, okay? And so when I'm looking at these reports and pulling them up, and I'm telling you, this is the kind of movement I expect during this time on a consistent basis, if you try to hop into a trend trade during that time when we don't expect any movement, you're probably going to be severely disappointed. Okay? Um, and so to start to understand, you know, what does this day look like that has these kind of news impacts over the last 12 months, not only helps you figure out how to take advantage of that movement with the news, but also should help you in your other systems that you're trading. If you're trading a trend-based system, maybe you're trading a range-bound system. You know, I have one I call boomerang. You know, if the market goes out, market comes back. Well, I'm probably not going to want to do like the fly out part that much if I only expect it to move, say, 10 or 20 pips. But if it does move about 20 pips and I get a reversal, that could be a really good trade for me. And have a little more confidence on that. I'm like, man, you know, hey, if the next hour comes on back and I just get a reversal on that and I don't expect it to move further than that, that can help me on those trades. So there's a lot of ways to use these news trades beyond just news trades. And I love the news trades, but sometimes you'll hop in and there's just either it's too expensive or it's too cheap. You can't do the trade. Does that mean it's not useful to you? No, it is definitely useful to you. Um, 
the premium's there, cool, trade it. But if it's not there, use it to help filter the other systems that you like to trade. And it'll be one of the best tips I can give you, just learning those seasonalities. Um, sort of a fundamental, it's a sort of a seasonality of the fundamental report of what does the market look like on that given day. And it uh, doesn't necessarily tell you where it's going to go or what it's going to do, but it does tell you how you need to be thinking about the market whenever certain reports come out like that. And is there a consistency to it that you can take advantage of? Okay, well, that wraps up our uh, news reports for the week. Let's check out where the markets are at on a uh, general basis here. Let's go in. Let's pull them on up and scroll on through a variety of the markets. And um, think about we might even do a little bit of extra magnet training later this week. I don't think we're going to have time in this specific uh, session here. But uh, later this week, might start uh, getting back in, doing some magnet trading on some of the indices, maybe in some of the FX pairs. Start weighing out some of those key levels that you want to be aware of when you're trading each day on where the market's going to go to, where the market's going to oscillate at, where volume's going to be required for it to break through, or it's just going to fall back, or maybe just bounce back and forth between two different magnets if it gets caught in between one of them. All right, so um, hopping on over, we'll pull up. We'll just start out with our main indices here. Let me throw a chart up on there. It takes a second, I know, for it to share on over. But you ought to be able to see it. If you give me a moment, it'll pop up. Um, <laughs> I've got a chart rendering right now. And don't forget to you know check out um, and get your Natix account. I've got that up now, but let me um, show you this real quick. If you're wanting to start learning and playing with these trades, hop on over to TFNN.com. Click on the Nadex banner on the right side of the page. Get your demo account and a trading demo trading account right there. So click on that right away. You can fill in your username, first name, you know, last name, phone number, and email address. Click apply for demo. They'll send you a password right away where you can log in. As soon as you've done that, then the next step is for you to go ahead and log in um, and get going. Check out the education they provide. Uh, they'll help you out, of course. Hop on over to TFNN.com. Check out the spread analyzer. Over here, I provide the spreads. I also provide the deviation levels every day at 830, which are extremely helpful. And um, let's go in and let's look over here at the specific market. And we'll look at this. Where is, you know, Euro dollar at right now? Uh, had a nice little uptrend uh, starting off this morning. Not a massive uptrend, just a little uptrend. Um, and you know, moved up. I mean, you got some, you know, little trades in there, popping up and you know, grabbing some. Turned back around, starting to do a little reversal at the moment. So let me back off. Really light volume. This is volume actually based on 6E. I'm sorry, whatever I do, your dollar 6E, but it's on ES. So you see, we're really on a low, low volume day. Okay, a very low volume day right here. Um, we we'll go over. We can check out some of the other markets. Let me go ahead and pull up Euro dollar. We'll look at that. See what we got. But um, oil is one of the big ones I want to check out with you as well. And because uh, it's been just taken off, I want to check out the volume on that one for you and see uh, how much more movement we got in it. We'll do a little oil review when we get back. But we can see the euro dollar uh, moving on down there. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty average volume day. Sort of like it comes in spurts and then backs off over and over again. So, uh, but nevertheless, moving down with a nice little trend for you. All right, stay there. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain 
contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And so right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at um, volume over on the 10-minute bars. So that's my favorite place to look at volume um, before, you know, finding any kind of magnet level, seeing what's happening in the market. Um, I'll use it on tick base bars for looking at, you know, extreme movements. But overall, I definitely am looking at this um, in the range of, like, hey, you know, where do I see massive uh, key points in the market that I might want to tighten up my trade? And so I'd like to point out to you, looking at oil right now, it's looking at the 11 o'clock price, okay? So sort of focusing in on that and going, all right, so what happened on the 11 a.m. price? How can I take advantage of that? There's a massive volume bar right there. And market has continued to, you know, move on up a little bit from there. So we've got a, you know, solid 50 cents or so. But we've got some, you know, some good movement since right around 11 o'clock, right before 11, I guess you could say. And um, got a good move 
but I need to be aware of a fact that there basically has been created a magnet with this large volume. Now I can back out. I can see, you know, how does that compare to other days? You can definitely tell that we're going to be looking at, you know, magnet price right there. So looking at the past days and the high volume bars, right around, uh, you know, the you know five thousand range or so on oil. So if I understand that, and that price has been hit today and establish that level. So let's just say we go in and we establish this as a magnet level, okay? And then we go over here and we look at what's hap what happened when that level was established. Watch how the market reacts to the magnet. Well, it comes down, goes back up to it, goes above it, back, it just literally oscillates around it. We even get a little bit of a pullback, and what does it do? It pops right back into it, comes back down through it, goes right back above it, pulling right back down right now. We're really at a point um, in oil, where not only are we at the past the one, we're at the one and a half deviation level, but we're really at a point where we want to start tightening that stop up, because if you want to get out of that trade back here, you know, or even now, I mean, you're talking maybe an extra ten or fifteen ticks in profit. So, what did you gain out of staying in the trade for that entire time? And uh, so, at what point are you going to just call it a day on the trade? And that's that's really where you want to get to. Like, where is it worth it my time? Let's say if I got back here on you know 950 or so, the market's running up, running up, running up, and then also the magnet level gets generated, and I don't see it keep going. If I keep keep shooting up to the next magnet, we can go back and we can plot that magnet. If I keep see it keep going and keep going, hey, that's awesome. But if I see it like oscillating around this magnet price, that probably means that's where we're going to sit for the rest of the day. We might get one last little push. We don't know which way it's going to go, though. The market is respecting that magnet level. And uh, we definitely saw you know, volume back back off. It picked back up a little bit, but actually started moving down a little bit. But picked back on up, came back up to the level. Tried to push through it with some volume. Nothing happened. Tried to push through with some volume again, and it's really tight right there. I mean, at this point, I'd be either tightening my stop extremely tight, like to, you know, right below that one-and-a-half deviation level, okay, or I'd be getting out of my trade. Um, you know, the nice thing about tightening it is you give uh, the market a chance to allow it to keep running. The nice thing about getting out is you lock in the profit, but may give up any chance for future potential profit. So this is definitely uh, where I would say tighten it up. Don't give all your profit back. Don't let it fall all the way back down to say like 104 or whatever. And uh, where I'd be looking at a stop right about now, normally, if I wasn't paying attention to volume. So. Is this a requirement for trading? No, but does it help you keep a little bit more of that profit? Yes. So definitely uh, be looking to tighten up that stuff. Looks like oil is pretty cooked for the day, and it's been a lot of time, literally hours now, about three, four hours, literally just in, well, not about three, but about three hours right now, uh, going on four in this range, and it'll be closing out here in about 30 minutes. And that last 30 minutes on oil can get pretty nuts. All right, y'all have a great day. Talk to you later. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You're watching Tiger TV.